Nick Walker is out of the Olympia, and I by no means am the guy who is going to be the first to talk about this. There's been numerous videos from at least 20 by my count when you just type in Nick Walker about him backing out of the Olympia and as to why this might be. Now, I certainly do have some speculations myself, and I wanted to address a couple of the points that I think are really worth kind of distributing to you that I haven't heard many people talk about yet. And I also have some insider information that is not really been published by anybody yet, so I I figured I might as well share it on this video, not to dismerch anything that Matt Jansen or Nick Walker are doing, because I think they're great people. I just think there's a bit of a, look, a miscommunication, a misuse of certain things, a, a whole conglomeration of mistakes made to line up to what we have at this current day and age. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was that in the video that Nick Walker had published, he looks not to be in shape. Um, he has a big double chin. He has a very large bonza belly. I mean, this thing is, is really big to just sitting here. I mean, it looks absolutely massive. And look, I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to talk poorly on anybody else because honestly, I am not the, the most aesthetic dude in the world. I'm not the biggest dude in the world. I get it. Nick Walker has is, is made a, a lot more progress than probably any of us could. But uh, it is worth noting as this is a subjective sport that does have to do a lot with person uh, looking good. And, and quite frankly, this doesn't look good. So many people were pointing out, hey, look at Nick, what, what's going on, right? Your, your stomach is huge here. You're obviously obviously not lean here. You know, you've definitely been out of prep for more than just a couple days at this point. You're, you're talking weeks, right? This is true. So obviously, you know, this is Nick's video. I want him to speak, but I also feel that it's important as his coach. Uh, you know, I think that my most important job in, in all of this is to protect Nick, to protect his image, to protect his health. And those are all the decisions and thought processes that I had that came to making this decision. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much like you said, you know, this is probably the hardest decision you know, obviously last year with the injury, that was one thing, but you know, I felt I was in a very good spot going into this prep, how I felt. And I guess, you know, like what Matt said, I, I think I, I'm pretty better chaos and coming here for the Olympia prep, I, I truly felt relaxed. You know, I felt okay. And I guess my body did too. And my body just said, I need a break. I need to relax. And it just, that was it. You know, and I think a lot of the stress that I, you know, endured over the past year just kind of caught up. And this prep obviously did not go the way we wanted it to. And it sucks because it was the second year in a row that I got to miss the Olympia that I worked so hard for. You know, and, I, and there's so many things that come into play because it's like, all I want to do is win the Olympia for myself and be Matt's first Olympia winner. You open Olympia winner and it's another year I gotta fucking miss it and it sucks but you know I refuse to step on stage anything less than my best. Now, historically, we've known Nick to have a lot of issues with binge eating and eating in the past. He's talked about needing to take breaks from his diet because he gets pretty intense. And when he turns that switch off, also gets really intense. And you see this a lot with bodybuilders where they'll binge eat and then purge and then binge eat and then purge. And it's a really toxic behavior that can be managed very easily. But oftentimes at this level, there's no room for management. And so why does Nick Walker have this large bonza belly? Well, it quite frankly is just the fact that he's likely binged eight. He is a very emotional human being. He's been through some trauma in the past, and I imagine that when he does get quite emotional, he turns to food. Or likely that's the, at least the first thing he's thinking about when it comes to dealing with the anxiety and stress. It's sort of like a rewarding mechanism that can calm him down, and so he eats a lot of food. Speaking from experience, by the way, of course, I've been there, done that before. I get it. Feeling full and having that CNS depression from a shit ton of insulin being pumped into your bloodstream is quite unique and slightly euphoric and I can understand why it might be advantageous or maybe not advantageous but desirable by some people when they are anxious and a little bit insecure. I don't necessarily think that his waistline at this current point or his body fat percentage in this video is representative of him as a physique. I just think he's probably been practicing some not so great behaviors and that's led to what we're seeing in this video. The other thing that I think is some insider information, I can't actually say that this is correct so I'm just going to say that this is alleged but from the research that I've been doing, men who I've been talking to in the groups, it appears that Nick Walker had actually received some fake anabolics leading up to the Olympia. Now, this is a very common happening within bodybuilding, and I see it a lot at a regional level. I wouldn't necessarily expect to see it at an Olympic level, which is quite unique, because usually at this point, these guys have access to pharmacology that you or I would simply just not have access to. They have people shipping them stuff for free and trying to rep their brand, just saying, hey, I work with Nick Walker. You want his gear? 
here, I got it kind of thing, right? And people will eat that shit up. Trust me on forums, people love that stuff. And so Nick Walker received some fake gear somehow within the mix of all he's doing. I don't really know if that's true, right? This is alleged, but it would make sense because his physique did look a lot flatter this year and wasn't necessarily something that I think was representative of what Nick Walker can usually bring to the stage when he does compete. Other people said that last year, because he had a blood clot and it wasn't actually his hamstring, that he had a blood clot and that's why he couldn't compete. And so probably this year, it's something very similar. I have some very unfortunate news to deliver to you guys. Um, I will not be competing in this year's Mr. Olympia due to a hamstring tear that I did um, right before we actually came here. Um, and I try to push through it. Um, I tried to do whatever I could, get all the treatment that I could, literally did, you know, whatever it takes. Um, but it just uh, gradually got worse. It did not progress in any way, shape or form. And me and my team, we thought it was best that we just pulled out because um, we knew there was just no shot of us placing top three at this point um, or higher. And we do not want to drop placing. And with how severe this tear is, we thought it was the best case. Uh, you know, that being said, this was a very hard decision to make, you know, cause this prep was very smooth. It was very easy, to be honest. I kept telling Matt every day, I'm gonna win your first one. And then, you know, last second this happens and it just, it just sucks because you don't know what to do. Now, Dave Balumbo is a maniac for many different reasons. Like everybody else, he isn't objectively a bad person, but he also isn't objectively a good person. So, come on. There's a lot to be said about him as a character. However, I will say that that is completely false. I've talked to many IFBB pros. Roman is one of the guys that, that I love conversing with, Roman Fritz. And he said, quite frankly, like he talked to Nick Walker. He saw his hamstring detached. He saw the bruising, swelling, and had a conversation with him about it. So this isn't true at all. He actually did tear his hamstring and he doesn't have any current blood clots. In the video that he published, he did mention health consequences though. And so I don't know if it was fake gear or if it was the health consequences or health detriments that he's experiencing. And of course, he didn't do us a justice of explaining what these things were. He just said, I have to watch out for my health. And usually for anybody that's been following bodybuilding for any period of time, when a bodybuilder says something like that, you know, it's gotten pretty bad. And so I would imagine that him and Matt have been pushing things endlessly for years. High doses of growth hormone, IGF-1 and anabolics all together to try to simultaneously get to this goal of being the biggest, most monstrous bodybuilder there is on the IFBB Pro stage. In doing that, there was little time to come off and clear out. And there was a lot of time to maximize and push lots of gear. I'm talking grams of gear. He said somewhere that he only ran 550 milligrams of testosterone. That is a lie, I assure you. He is running much more and taking a copious amount of growth hormone and taking a copious amount of IGF-1. And we've seen this with many of Matt's athletes before. So people will say, oh, you're just exaggerating because you're not as big as him. And I would say, look at any of Matt's athletes who have complained about health or came out and literally talked about what Matt was having them do, or look at the people who have died under Matt's roster. We had a very long video that was pretty good on Dallas McCarver and his death. And when he actually had that autopsy done, it was very clear he was abusing a extremely high dose of growth promoting agents because his organs were nearly triple the size of a normal human beings. Now, Chase Irons just did a beautiful organ imaging test posting the results on five grams of total gear. His organs were normal sized. That's crazy. So how much would Dallas McCarver have to be running to have triple the size of normal human organs? Your guess is as good as mine, but it's certainly not anywhere in the ballpark of two grams of gear. So if I'm to deduce from past individuals that have been coached by Matt Jansen and what has happened to them and then kind of put that into the now and just sort of think about what's going on, I could likely say that this is an amalgam of things that's sort of an ambiguous thing that sort of ties together and has been stratified to him dropping out of the Olympia. And that is quite frankly that one, he has a big emotional issue. He, he binge eats. He doesn't stay on path when he's off path. Of course, when he's on path, he is most on path compared to most people. When he's off path, he's almost way off path, especially when emotions come into play. So he bounced out of the Olympia. He knew what happened. He started binge eating right away. That's why his belly's big. That's why he looks like he's gained 15, 20 pounds of water. He, he looks not so great. Secondly, I believe that his gear was probably fake. I don't know if this was actually true. Again, this is all allegedly, but if he got fake short estered gear and they were running it for two to three weeks prior to getting into the Olympia, that would ruin a prep for someone at that level. I mean, clearly he wasn't looking 
looking as good as he could have leading up to the Olympia. And I believe there was something at play there with fake compounds. And then lastly, the health. The health is a massive issue. Nick Walker was suffering consequences from abusing steroids and anabolics of any capacity, growth hormone, insulin, IGF-1, any other peptide for years on end without stopping. And I believe that from my experience with what other professional open bodybuilders at the Olympia level are running very openly talk to me, but I can't simply disclose their information. Cruises or the periods in which a bodybuilder will come off higher doses of androgens to lower doses of androgens to supply more health to their body. Cruises are somewhere around 750 to 1000 milligrams of testosterone. Now, this might just be a select few open bodybuilders and not necessarily all of them, but it's definitely a large majority. And this has gotten Nick highly emotional and has sort of gave him this reclusive trait as of right now because he's staying quiet but i do feel bad for him i think that this is unfortunate because people often look at him because he talks the biggest talk and sometimes can walk that biggest walk but most often he just spits out some crazy shit and now again, the second time in a row, he's pulling back out very, very close to the show. I mean, a week before the Olympia. And to me, it was obvious that he had made this decision prior to having uh, made this video because his body composition is nowhere near where it needs to be in this video and something else is probably amok. But let me know what you think. Do you have insider information? Let me know down below. I'd be curious to see if you have any other thoughts that could have led to this catastrophe. I feel bad for Nick. I think he's a great bodybuilder, just not my personal taste and aesthetic. But hey, shit happens in bodybuilding and we got to roll with it. Hopefully he can come back next year and make the most out of it if i was his coach quite frankly what i would be doing is having him do a look i could make a whole video on this but i'll briefly say i would have nick being in a situation where he's doing five days of eating two days of fasting for a solid six months right during that period of time anabolics are very low like 200 milligrams at most with no growth hormone no insulin no other peptides i would have him using and abusing metformin and i would have that man be doing extremely high intensity hit activity and the hope behind all of these things is, yes, he's going to inevitably downsize. And that's going to have to be the sacrifice he needs to make. But at the end of the day, he's going to be healthier. He's going to shrink his organ size and most importantly, treat any sort of fatty liver disease that he has or other fat around his organs. Doing both of those things massively is going to make his waist shrink in and make his physique more appealing. While he might be 20 or 30 pounds lighter, I think that look is going to be much bigger in comparison to where he's at now with the Bonza belly. And then at that point when weight has come down and the waist is sucked in and we can test for fatty liver disease by doing an ultrasound of your hepatic system and see that these things are cleared out then we can start talking about negotiating gear upwards and being more conscientious with eating behaviors and more specifically health markers as we progress forward it would look a lot like something of that nature it sounds counterintuitive for bodybuilding but sometimes you have to take two steps back in bodybuilding to take four steps forward it, it really does require sometimes a complete recompositioning of the human body and then pushing back up again and we've seen this in many people within the bodybuilding industry that's about it folks if you liked this video comment down below and if you could do me the huge favor which is completely free to you subscribe to the channel it helps me out a ton and truly i am trying desperately to take case subscribers that's it that's all i i really uh i'm pumping my fist for behind the scenes of every video so we'll talk to you later